it's crazy, man. When you really find what you're supposed to do on earth, things change for you. It becomes easy. But you just don't find it right away. It's a process. You go through so much. Basically, I just wanted to, you know, thank you for granting me just a little bit of your time. I coach two XBL, which is glorified pickup, and I coach a travel. From like when you first started to like where you ended up, yeah, that's so cool. That would be crazy. That's your idea? <laughs> that's your idea. Good morning, guys. Today is Saturday, August 24th, 2024. And we have 69 days until we launch the All Dreams platform to amateur athletes worldwide. It is 7.37 a.m. And we have customer discovery research meetings today so i have one at eight o'clock which is nine o'clock um in new york so i'm very excited about going on this exploration honestly like super super excited uh we're here like we're here um my personal goal my personal goal throughout these 69 days is to do customer discovery and get 70 pre-sale customers by the time we launch. Not gonna be an easy thing, but that's going to be my goal, is to get 70 pre-sale customers before we even launch the platform, okay? Um, So I have two customer discovery meetings today and man, it's, it's really, it's really dope to explore new things, honestly, especially in business, especially, you know, when you create something and it's like, man, look, I get a chance to do what I love and talk to people about it and see it's like a game you know where you like i am going i'm being unbiased in these meetings but it's like a game a game to gain the information that you need in order to bring your product to the market right to get real information from real people that you don't know and i think that's one of the biggest parts of the customer discovery process is to get unbiased information from people that you don't even know because as an entrepreneur I have these assumptions for what I believe they need but this is the real facts of the pain points from our potential customers and I'm really going on an exploration in this process. So goals, goals, goals. We have 69 days before we launch the platform and I don't wanna think so far out, but what I do wanna do is I wanna set goals. Let's set a yearly goal. So from when the platform launches, I want to say a one year goal is 1 million annual recurring revenue. Okay. So I already did the, the math on it. That's like 13,400 paying customers under the yearly subscription plan. Okay. I say, man, 13,000, that's not a lot. But then when you think, man, put 13,000 people into a gym, that's a lot of people, okay? So my personal goal is for us to get to 1 million annual recurring revenue within the first year of launching the All Dreams platform, okay? It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. However, 
I believe that we can do that. And that will open up more opportunities to scale to 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, and possibly 26 million, which is the target where we want to be within three to five years. Okay. Um, all of this is a process and I'm happy to be documenting this complete process, uh, of going on this journey, going on, you know, going on this, this entrepreneurial journey of building this, this startup, you know? Uh, so that's it for right now. I'm going to get ready for my customer discovery meetings and, um, you guys have a great weekend. Peace. Into it. Hey, good morning, man. How are you? I'm well. All right, how's it going? Going well, going well, man. Thanks for uh, taking this, taking time out. <laughs> How old is your son? He's uh, what, he actually he's thirteen. He'll be fourteen uh, in through on September twenty fourth. So he's thirteen, but he'll be fourteen about a month. Okay, okay. And uh, what's what sports does he play? Because so I'm kind of going into these these like this this research where I don't know much about anyone i'm just like looking for people to talk to <clears throat> that has children that are playing sports mm -hmm. so yeah he, uh, he plays baseball and basketball baseball and uh, basketball. Travel. yeah okay okay so he's about to turn 14 so what what grade is that around that's like seven eight so he's um he's going to be a freshman in high school next year he uh, he is entering um, high school for the first time, but he just graduated from eighth grade. Okay, okay. So, so come, this coming September, he'll be a, he'll be a freshman. My son is a really gifted athlete, and he's very young for his age. He's actually um, most of his um, classmates have turned fourteen in the early part of this year. You know, February, March, April, May, because he's not turning fourteen until the end of this month. He's actually one of the younger. Uh, one in his grade, so he ends up playing. He plays up, you know, with older grades, but he he wants to. I don't know if you've ever heard of the um, uh, terminology reclass, um, but he wants to reclass, which means he would repeat a grade so that he's playing with guys that are really more close to his age, but it gives them an extra year of eligibility to play in high school. Um, so instead of having you know four years of playing in high school, he'll be able to play five years in high school because he's a Probably a good chance he'll be playing varsity basketball next year, entering his freshman year. Um, so if he repeats eighth grade, he'll be able to play varsity for five years. So wow. um, that's what we've been kind of talking about. It's something that he's asked me to do for a couple of um, a couple of uh, months. He's been asking for that, and it's a lot of nuances to it. But his um, his travel basketball coach is is really highly in favor of it. Um, I have my wife who. Um, whose uh, cousin is a D1 basketball coach who recommended as well. One of his son had reclassed, and now he's, like, got seven recruitment letters already going into his junior year. <laughs> so wow. it's um it's something, you know, it's a big move. Uh, you know, I haven't officially decided I'm going to do it yet, but I don't have a lot of time because school starts in, like, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Man, that's yeah, that's that's really, really interesting. What What's his size like? How what, Like, how tall is he? So he's, uh, I want to say he's, Five, 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 roughly five, six. 
Um, he's pretty tall for his age. Um, I, I I don't know what his he's gonna end up being. His height is gonna end up being. Actually, Morris is about five eight five nine. <laughs> so I'm way off. But he he plays a point guard position, so he's fairly tall for his age. When he started, when he was like eight, uh, nine years old, were you like filming yeah. some of the, you know some of the some of the things that he was doing? Like, do you do you kind of like like keep track yeah. of his 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 sports journey? Yeah. So I was I, I would say this. I was doing it but a little, not as much as his mother was. His mother would be recording everything. I would do my little you know, screenshots here and there, my little clips here and there with videos. But um, as he started better, I'm realizing, like, wow, he really started to progress. Because when he first started, it was just kind of like he just involved in the sport, you know, just for his, his for participation award. And, you know, as the years kind of went by, especially after COVID, it just it just when it, it really just uh, shot to a level where I didn't even expect. I didn't even expect him to be as good as he is. I wouldn't expect him to play as much as he's playing. So I started doing it a lot more. I was actually just telling my wife that I have to kind of figure out how to finagle that even more because I'm so focused on a game because I'm just naturally competitive. And I'm it's, I, a lot of times I'm doing a scoreboard um, for the basketball games or sometimes I'll do the scorebook for the baseball just to help the coach out. But now I'm like so in tune with his game and how he's developing. I got to try to totally focus. So I'm, I'm literally just having this conversation with my wife that I have to figure out a way to kind of try to get them to record them more because, you know, a lot of kids now are putting together their own self, you know, highlights, if you will, and whether it be YouTube or TikTok and kind of putting his own packages together so that, you know, when if he does start getting recruited, I have something to pay for him. So it's still a work in progress for me. All right. So first customer discovery meeting was with Mr. Dalton. He has a son named Miles. I think Miles is about 14 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Very, very good, very good talk with him. Miles is the prototype athlete. Mr. Dalton is the prototype parent that we are looking for uh, to be a part of all dreams. Um. Man, I can't say enough about this conversation. It was really, really good. Um, he will give a referral. And I'm pretty sure that he would sign up to be a customer. Um. The exploration process, if I can do this over and over again, we really have something that could be special. And the the bad part I would say about this is that I can't speak to a million people, but I would love to speak to so many people just like I spoke to Mr. Dalton about his son because it's so many as so many athletes it's so many athletes i would love to do this every single day i would love to have these type of meetings lined up over and over and over again it just really ignited me and it's a problem that we will be solving like this is not just hey all dreams is here to monetize we're actually a solution to a problem and in this exploration he explains it itself without me even being biased towards that right just in asking questions just in asking the questions so uh this was a success and we have more work to do and we have more people to talk to we have an endless amount of parents that are athletes that we can talk to but prototype uh, Mr. Dalton and his son Miles. And uh, man, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to join Miles' Dreamers of All. <laughs> Honestly, to see where he takes it. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll close out there. Basically, I just want to, you know, thank you for granting me just a little bit of your time. I just want to talk about 
uh, youth athletics, your experience in youth athletics, um, just, you know, basically general questions. I was just doing some research on the athletic experience that people have with youth sports. You know, um, I'm thinking about maybe doing a business possibly that could possibly help um, youth athletes. And I want to get some feedback and, you know, see how everyone is experiencing youth athletics right now. Uh, I played basketball some time ago, so long time ago, but it's very, very different now. I coach two XBL, which is glorified pickup. And I coach a travel, uh, all for my son, pretty much, and uh, all basketball. Okay, and let's let's talk about your son. Uh, how old is your son? Fourteen. He's fourteen. Okay, and what grade is he at? He in? He's going into ninth grade at uh, Sweet Home. Oh, at Sweet Home. Okay, is he is he looking to play like JV or? Yeah, he's going to play JV. Like if I do record something, it goes into my phone. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it other people? Is it other people besides yourself that uh, supports your your son's uh, basketball career? Yeah, his mom's involved. I mean, she helps fund it. Uh, my my mom tries to come to as many games as possible. Uh, the the coaches at Sweet Home really like my son, and they get him involved in you know the summer leagues and stuff. So it, it, we have um, a very good sweet home family here where everyone's trying to make everybody better. So you would say that some, most, most of your kids that play for your team or most of the kids that you, that you, that you've coached or that you see, they need help with funding. Uh, in Buffalo more. Yes. As we tricked out, like, so for my modified team to get them to do a travel would be almost impossible because of costs and rides and everything. Okay. I, I kind of reflect on two different teams and two different places too. Right. Uh, I think the, the funding, it, it's just expensive. I mean, travel is expensive. Right. Right. Uh, I know some of uh, the parents are in, in a little bit better spot. Like we all make it work. Right. Yeah. But I also know it takes away from a lot of things for us to me, right. me, sure. I mean, there is less to go around for other things and I get a discounted rate because I'm coaching it. Right. So it's, it, it's even cheaper for me, but it's, uh, you know, having two kids these days and being a teacher and having a nurse to their mom, it's not what it was in the forties and fifties where you were living the dream. No, no. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We had our second customer discovery interview um, with Coach Jeff, and the results was definitely different from the first interview, even though Coach Jeff not only coaches, but he also has a son that plays, and his son is also 14. Coach Jeff does not have video or much video of his son because he's obviously coaching the story of his son's athletic career is not so much of it's not so much of a you know something that he really cares much about he doesn't really care much about taking videos he just cares about being with his son on it on the journey of them doing this together however all dreams are all in one platform so therefore it's not just one way where we can service an amateur athlete but he did mention um funding right so funding for some of the kids that he coaches is definitely a problem and yearly he's saying it's still two to three grand per year per athlete for them to play um so in some facet we probably can service 
Coach Jeff and his son with all dreams and with the platform in some facet, maybe not the storage and the journey of an athlete, right? But maybe in another way, uh, as far as some of his players getting funding. Man, my phone is blowing up, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was a, a very good customer discovery meeting and we got two referrals. We got one referral from uh, from Miles' father, Mr. Dalton, and we got a referral from Coach Jeff. It's crazy, man. When you really find what you're supposed to do on earth, things change for you. It becomes easy, but you just don't find it right away. It's a process. You go through so much. I've went through so much to get to this point right here where I'm like, man, this is really what I'm supposed to do on earth. And obviously all dreams that he didn't even start as what we're building now is this platform. It didn't start as that. Um, but, man, this is what I'm supposed to do on Earth, and uh, I really thank God for that. Okay, so if you wanted to, you know, kind of tell me about, you know, your experience in, in athletics, and, you know, we can kind of just start start from there. So I played football, basketball, and track in high school. Um I guess I was an average athlete, a little above average, I guess I would say. My brother was an above average athlete, um, state champ in track and uh, championship football teams. Uh, so we were always in sports. Um, football was my better sport. But like now that I have a son, my son didn't like football too much. So um, he was more geared towards basketball. Okay. So started coaching basketball in second grade, just like a local youth program, uh, like a house league. And the kids are pretty good and the parents loved what I was doing. And I was like, maybe I should, you know, take what I learned when I was younger and give it to the kids. And like now I am eight years into it and I'm going to be the assistant varsity basketball coach at Nichols this year. Um, and that was pretty much my start. I mean, I did travel basketball all all the way through from second grade to. Uh, so like most of the kids that are like juniors and seniors around right now, those are kids that grew up like playing basketball for me or on my team. Wow. That's, okay. So th this is going to be an exciting year for me um, just to watch them. I mean, because I remember them when they were small and yeah. now they're growing up to Duncan and going to go far and be successful, hopefully. How, how important do you think it is? Let's just use you. As an example, how important would it would it have been to to have the full documentation of your sports journey? Right. It right no 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 like like right now in one place where you can go back and and show your son, like, yo, this is what I was doing in actual time. Like we have we have that ability now with you know with these, right? So right. how like how would you know? Tell me, tell me, would that would that would that be something that you would want? Yeah, that would be dope. I mean, like, I mean, if you're talking like legit, like, like organized, like yeah. that would be dope. Yeah. That would be dope. And it was just all like just his stuff or like her stuff. That would be dope. Yeah, that would yeah. be dope. Yeah. How, how you think that would be that would be pretty that would be pretty valuable, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That would be like a, yeah, a good gift to give. Like, uh, yeah. Cause even if you're not like a top athlete, like senior night to like for your parents to give you some shit like that, to like for you to watch right. from like when you first started to like where you ended up. Yeah. That shit would be so cool. That would be crazy. That's your idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's your idea. <laughs> no, no, no. Shoot this. How, how, it's, how much does it cost to fund an athlete nowadays? Uh, for a year train training travel all of that just 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 a guesstimate what you what you would say training uh hotels travel food equipment sneakers and all of that what would you say would it cost it, it costs a per year to to so to i would say there, there's two different costs so like the core high school it gets a little bit more expensive because you have two if you just have a basketball player you've got two seasons that you play travel basketball until you get into high school, essentially. Right. So that's, I mean, that's pretty much a grand accession for that. You right. right. Yeah. So what's, what's your thoughts about something like that geared for amateur, you know, amateur athletes? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you use the term help. I don't know how much it would help that 
uh, athlete. I think it would be more geared towards like an entertainment or like a supportive uh, type thing. You got me thinking uh, with that, like what just di different avenues that you would uh, like, uh, like how would you, how would you present that? Like, uh, it would have to be more than just like you're, you're, it's a great idea. You're just giving me the basics, uh, I'm sure. But like, yeah, the, the, the intricacies of it would be definitely make a difference too. Yeah. Like how, like how it was like offered, you know what I mean? And like how, how somebody could support or like if, if they had access to like uh, a certain amount of videos, like, yeah, but there, it would definitely be. I mean, yeah, you could say you you could have a dedicated spot. Like you wouldn't have to look through your phone and be like, "Oh, look at this video of Jonah." Like you'd be a dedicated spot. You could go to a dedicated game and be like, "I remember this was March in 2021, and he had right, 13 right. three pointers in a game." Right. Like that's that would be that would be that would be dope for that purpose to go back and look and have it be organized like that would be that would be great. That would that would be I would pay for something like that, but I don't know how much I would pay. So I just finished another customer discovery meeting with a guy named Coach Thompson. He has a basketball player playing son that's 15 years old. His son has been playing since uh, second grade. So he has a lot of footage of his son and the progress. His son uh, does go to private training and very, very good um, – conversation with him and also he's going to give a referral uh for another coach and you know would like to see what that coach is going to say about what we're trying to build uh really really good feedback really good feedback i think this is something i really do i really believe this is something um man Just from customer discovery and these conversations, and oddly enough, you know, he said, you know, <laughs> he started thinking business wise, and he says, "Man, what?" And because I, I asked him, "You, what would a parent pay for this? Something like that, or whatever?" He started getting the drift of what's going on, or whatever. You know, it's a curious thing, you know. Like people are like, uh. All right, yo, what is this guy talking to me about? You know, what is this? What's the real motive behind this? You know, and he said, you know, so we get to the point. I say, all right, well, look, this is what I'm thinking about. It's just a business idea, possibly. I don't know. It's research, uh, and I'm asking guys like you, uh, and he says, well, now I'm thinking business wise. You know, what what would that look like? And he says, uh, well. What I would do is I would put it on subscription and I would charge like $9.99. And we're lower than $9.99, so we're in a ballpark or whatever. But great day of customer discovery uh, today. And uh, it is 5.38 p.m. here. And uh, I'm going to end out the day. Very, very excited. I think we really have something with this platform. We really have something. I think it can be something. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to continue talking to to, to potential uh, customers, customer discovery. Uh, yeah. God bless, man. God bless. See you guys tomorrow.